uh, we talked about last week, or excuse me, uh, really the past uh, month or two that we have these orders that are being put on on Mondays for the entire week. And what we saw this morning is that a lot of those value orders that didn't get put on last week were put on this week. And we see this little bit of a reaction here in the open on the tech side, which again, we rotated from value into growth. Looks like that's what we're going to be doing here. Maybe finding a balance. We'll talk about it. Uh, but it seems like there's a little bit of confusion this morning when those orders came through. Uh, I find that pretty silly, but uh, I'm pretty sure everyone understands that energy was going to be coming up. Everyone understood that banks were going to be coming up. Maybe some other things were not. Uh, so now we're probably in for a little bit of a little bit of back and forth today, uh, based on these orders that we've seen so far. You do have things like X that are up uh, very well off of off of the low here. So again, we're kind of mixed, kind of mixed. We'll have to see what exactly is uh, going on because it looks like there is some confusion with some orders that may or may not have supposed to been placed. Not sure. Not sure, but it looks like a nice morning, very nice bid morning to start, uh, even with a little bit of pullback. Uh, it does set up some positions for us in a nice spot, so we'll take them. Uh, retail stores do look nice coming off it, so again, I do think that there's... I read some things this morning uh, and for some from some articles from over the weekend talking about... I don't know why I read everything anymore because uh, a lot of it I do find... Um, a lot of lack of understanding but what i was reading is mostly this idea that we get completely shocked by the dot plot and now the reinflation trade in the idea that the economy is going to stay hot uh, for a long time is completely gone the economy is going to go back to normal which i guess means shit very quickly which means tech is the only thing we could possibly be trading i i find it very Erupt and ignorant that's we're rotating into growth here that doesn't mean the economy is not going to do well because we're going to somehow rise interest rates you know how we're going to rise interest rates it goes from zero to 0 0.01 and then 0 0.02 it goes from 120 billion a month to 110 billion a month to 100 billion i think uh and we're talking about when? Two years from now? Huh. Hmm. Two years from now. I'm going to trade everything for the next two years. How about that? And then we'll talk about it. <laughs> but we'll see. Nice bid morning. Nice bid morning. Uh, Dow getting, getting lift up. So uh, at least now what we can say is everything is up in the morning. Uh, everything is up in the market. Uh, did talk about how the Dow should be coming back up into the channel here this today it didn't gap into it which was a little strange for me but here you are you're back in we're one percent on every indice now uh looks good big fan big fan of nice hot mondays so we're in everything uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about some of the positions that uh are probably on people's minds in terms of questions of how to manage z we pushed over the weekend what do you do this morning i had to hold uh, what I usually talk about here is if you, okay, there's kind of two things here. If we're in an option position that we push overnight or over the weekend and you gap down and open much lower to the point where your options are going to be completely different value than what you had bought them, you should sell them immediately. If they don't get stopped out, you should be selling them immediately. And you can, if you really want to buy them, you can rebuy on a support or just rebuy when you see that the market's actually going bit. This is usually on a, a first tick basis. So you look for the first tick in price and then you buy it, right? Or, I mean, excuse me, then you sell it. If it's a green tick, then you just hold it because it looks like it's coming up. In Z here, everything was a little, uh, a little bit, all over the place hard to tell we're not break even we're lower but there's not much you can do here because you have support and no one's really selling if no one's selling the options it's in no one's really buying them right then there's no liquidity and there's not much you can do here and so we're just holding them 
everything should be coming up, right? And so we're getting some, again, some tickers out there in the market have this, this reaction to what was happening in the NASDAQ at open. Z is a mixture of what we're looking at with, with again, on uh, sort of uh, a more personal real estate sort of side of things that should have demand and then Z being growth, we have a good idea of what's going on there. So in terms of options here, well, sometimes you're gonna lose some value. It's gonna happen. Cart looks good though. So I obviously updated that uh, from the weekend. We talked about it. Uh, It looks good. It looks good. So nice little, nice little peg on the on the trend line support. I'll count that as a bullish move. So we'll take it. We will take it. Otherwise, um, other tickers on the list. We've had a little bit of pullbacks. Uh, they should all be in good spots to buy. So uh, again, that's what we want. So don't look at the red as a negative. Uh, look at it as an entry. Right. That's. I think that's pretty straightforward. But. Just for anybody that's wondering, yes, these are. <laughs> that is how you enter. That is how you enter things. Uh, we had some good entries on some other charts. Uh, Fiverr, plan. These are pretty straightforward. It doesn't get much easier than just seeing a you know uh, a support buy. You know, these are pretty straightforward. So EBR as well. So I was trying to mention. So uh, pretty nice support buys on anything new. Uh, home builders, we pushed over the weekend. I updated the DHI chart because I posted the LEN chart. We had already been trading on the DHI, ITB, those kind of ideas, but I wanted to just throw that chart on there as well because it is the big one. So, uh, just to give you an idea how that move again, we took advantage of this move here. We look at it through LEN. That's here, right? We had a nice day on Friday, but just wanted to give you the DHI chart in case you bought that instead of LEN. Spy, let's talk a little bit about. Hmm, converging trend line in horizontal resistance here. When we have two levels of supply that are crossing, form this little X. What usually happens? Price likes to go through it. It likes to pass through two levels of supply. In this case, it's a trend line in a horizontal resistance. And what's happening? Well, that's an area where there's a lot of supply. That's a big order spot. Kind of makes you wonder how this candle is chasing for that spot. And we talked about this on Friday that I believed that's where we were going. Looks like that's where we're going. Now, doesn't need to, but that looks like where it's going. So, uh, again, that was a lot of our bets. Going into this week, we have some pretty short-term bets. We get some Julys on, got quite a bit of Julys on. Uh, and so uh, one part of when you do that is that you need a good start. This is a nice start. Uh, and we, again, utilize the idea of converging levels of supply. That's a big, heavy area. We should be getting a nice, again, gravitation towards this spot, this sort of X here, with the again the idea and the argument that that's not going to be a rejection that's going to be basically a breakthrough and you're going to burst through there and get back into what we understand is all-time high on the rest of the market nasdaq is all-time high of course uh, but that should be good uh on the value side getting picked up as the dow again as we had an expectation the dow should pick uh should come back into the channel here into the trend line this morning which it has so far it's doing the best so uh, so far today with a uh, a pickup from banks and energy which of course we bet on we bet this on friday so we bet at the low that banks and energy would be up today they're both up Energy's looking to go to put two percent on so anyone that took those those are uh as if you read any articles this weekend were gut checks right gut checks for the value trade oof yeah i mean it was a gut check to go take that trade and make money on it but oof, gut check right there uh, those are looking decent. We'll see again. Um, I think Sp Spoon just jumped in here. I was talking a little bit about this morning. Uh, we had the, so again, last week we had this rotation to growth. But this morning we had the usual Monday orders come in on value. And I think it it threw people off a little bit because NASDAQ starts selling all values going up as it 
on with its usual Monday orders again, where we, where everything's putting on these big weekly Monday orders. All of them came in at the start, and everyone's going, "Hold on a moment, what are we doing here?" Now everyone's going back on the same page. Everything's going up. Looks good. Uh, I'm going to talk about other markets since I wasn't here at the uh, start at nine. Uh, Bitcoin is down. We do see further, further take profit. I guess you could say. I think it's more of just uh, more of the same, right? More of the same. Really leading into the start of the today. Uh, again, it's sitting in this spot. It's unknown. The chart's looking less and less like it's being traded. I think that's an important thing to look at. It doesn't look like it's being traded. It's just it's just sitting here, right? It's not doing much. Usually a chart that's being traded is going to give you some ideas of what people are thinking, where people are possibly thinking about buying. Maybe they're buying support down here, right? Maybe we're going to do another swing here. But Bitcoin is definitely in the dumps right now, uh, down 7.5% to start today. Look over here at the dollar. Now, the dollar, we had swung up basically all last week with the rotation. Now we're taking it back down. Is this helpful? Well, we know this is being tied into this little old thing here with the two uh with the the two year yield. We're going to see if this two year yield starts to come down here and sort of at least reflect back this idea, which again, you can't really tell so far to start the day. Uh if we go over to that chart specifically, take a look it's it is making a, a move from from the high and it's possible but this chart is so sporadic you need more than just 30 minutes of time so we're going to see if this starts to come down here uh the overall uh bond market is continuing to be sold yields are going up again we reached some pretty uh pretty low points uh <laughs> we, we were down about 1.4 flat on the 10 year uh what do we why do we have some more uh more selling here because we had quite a bit of buying last week that i think was directly uh to hedge some of the growth moves because again people were selling selling their value positions uh but yeah we'll see uh i did want to mention uh europe is doing well today so again they were trading all-time highs forever and then uh we had that that friday where they had some take profit or excuse me last week now he had some take profit but looks fine now uh, what was i looking for sorry oh going over to china uh hang Seng came down today which i think is a little surprising as we've had this rotation to growth you would think the world markets would reflect this uh the chinese markets did not and it's it's a little bit of a head scratcher. Japan was down over three uh, percent. Again, it's just it's it's a little bit of everything. I think. Uh, I think the biggest thing is still when when you think about wherever you are, if there's something you want to buy, or if if you're prompted. Right, you you live in Japan, you live in in Hong Kong, uh, you live in Shenzhen, you you live in Shanghai. You're prompted with a question of, okay, where do we put a billion dollars? There's a part of you that wants to put it into your own market, and then there's a part of you that goes, the most obvious thing to buy right now is U.S. equities, and I do think we can again lend some of that dollar move to the upside as more money coming here and we've seen it that it's actually the dollar technically should be trending down still being correlated to money supply in some sort of sense and with inflation yet we continue to hold a level and sometimes go bid right a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that there's continued inflow into the u.s equity market so again conversion from whatever currency into the dollar is causing that this is still happening. If you were to buy tech in China, then you're not buying tech in the US. I, I do find it really silly that, again, that I think that China is at such a low that it's a good buy, but 
again, I think there's such regulation fear that everyone's kind of worried about buying it still. So uh, we're seeing it. I, I think that we, everyone sort of thinks that, and we've talked about this for, I don't know, for months and months. And it's just, it, it's one of those things. And, you know, maybe it'll go away. Maybe it won't. It's, it won't really show itself uh, until it happens. So uh, we'll see. Uh, overall, though, we we have mostly mostly continuations from support. Uh, EVXL continued. This chart's been pretty ridiculous. Uh, when it comes to these charts that we look at that we're starting at kind of a low point where penny stocks didn't do much and we kind of tracked it when it became a stock that we would look at, uh, they, of course, have a lot of points they can put on, so there's not really ever telling. Uh, these kind of ones, of course, they become things of their own. Whether we can actually trade them or not is one thing. So it is just interesting to see how some of these things have developed since we've started some really volatile uh, trading since COVID. Right. Uh, overall, though, everything looking good on the on the value side uh, and also how we look at value with healthcare, right? Big healthcare we've been talking about for a long time now. Obviously, we had some consolidations come through, but some nice bids. So things like NTRA here uh, coming off support after there's a little bit of a flag here, probably update that. Everything looks similar, right? That's what you want. Everything looks similar. Moderna coming up off the similar idea. Again, you can tell how all these little consolidations, again, that came from last week as we rotated the growth are coming back up they're breaking out of that and so again it's going to beg a question of okay we're rotating to growth but are we going to leave valued behind and that's again everything's going to go up i find it really hard to believe that only one side of the market can go up it's not how it works right i'm pretty sure Pretty sure we have enough money to go around to buy everything. So that's what it looks like so far. Looking at individual tickers here as well. Oh, a big fan. Makes it a little bit easier for everybody. Um, keep it on the market. Again, watching for S&P to get up to that. Uh, that big level of supply. Uh, let me just give you the number again. So right here, 420. 420. I told some of you, or I told the, everybody, go buy some 420 spies if you don't want to buy individual tickers, and you're going to be great. The July monthly, 420s. You're probably doing pretty well right now. You're going to be doing a whole lot better when you blow through 420. So again, 420 is the point we're watching for today. Today. Uh, that's where it lines up. This is already a percent. It's only gone one way so far. Uh, things don't go one way forever. So you could you could certainly get up to that point, and then we've already exhausted all the bid, and then we we uh, <laughs> we we get rejected, and then maybe we have to swing back up. It's going to be interesting to see the the form of today, and I don't know. I think. I think everyone sort of digested what happened there at open already. So, and again, what you're going to have here is energy and banks are going to start to come bid, and it's going to help this number a lot as growth also continues to go bid. Uh, if we look at mega caps, mega caps should be returning from from that pullback, right? So we're starting to go back to break over break even. So Apple's now ten basis points. Amazon should be catching up. This is just again a factor of its price. Looks like it was making the move. This is some low volume jaded kind of uh looking candles here microsoft already did it up half a percent on the day google up almost one percent on the day this said fuck it uh there you go google doing the usual facebook was sharp as well of 20 basis points tesla this is a little bit of a different trade in terms of in terms of our entry again we're going to be careful this got rejected right off the start which again is the opposite of what it would have taken to enter this position here this open uh, in terms of this chart, I should put a disclaimer. I talked about not entering this over the weekend and how we're not buying it on dips. We're not buying this on dips. So 
Again, just remember my comments from before and take them to heart. We're not going to buy this on a dip here. That's not what we're doing. We're buying it on the breakout. Post it because we're close. This is a breakout when you when you look at it. We need it to be a breakout. Again, there's a lot of open space up here that we can trade it. That's why I took the trade back over here. It didn't end up working out. This is not the candle you enter on. Now, if you really kind of believe in this idea, and I do believe in the idea uh, in the breakout sense, but if you believe in it, even if it comes down to support that you should be buying on it, then you, of course, can take a support buy uh, because this is quite a bit of percent. From 600 to 625 here is about 4%. So if you want to capture that 4%, then buy it on support when it swings down. Uh, and takes the swing back up or if it does uh, something like right here this morning uh, i guess you can but i don't really need to risk a big position again it's going to be expensive i don't need to risk that entry position for two percent i don't care i'll wait for it to come back right so again you don't need to go risk it all for two points we're risking it for ten percent we don't need two we need ten right so Think about it a little bit like that and also how this chart is not a pullback chart. Every other mega cap is a pullback buying chart. We will buy every pullback. We will not buy every pullback on Tesla. If Tesla doesn't have momentum, it has nothing, right? That's that's the way she goes. In terms of the Dow, everything's green on the Dow. You have some big names up here. If you take a look, we got CAT up 3%. Again, return of value. CBX 2.5, IBM 2.5. CSCO over two, TRV two. Again, travel has been doing well. The TRV chart is kind of just following again the Dow. And, and we've seen this banks up, HDB, JNJ. JNJ has also gotten again pegged down because of the, the Dow Jones. We'll see how the, the rest of the market goes. Again, retail stores doing well. So Nike's doing it right here. These charts again offer nice nice opportunities we again are being mindful that a growth rotation has taken place we're not betting against anything right we're not betting against these uh, but in terms of their buys they are certainly different than buying on the pullbacks on things that have been bullish continuously these have been going down for a couple weeks now right we're going to be mindful of that we're not looking to buy things. S and P is down for a week. We buy that on a pullback, of course. That was a little different, right? We we understand those those differences. And overall, very nice day. Uh, commodities are up today uh, again, so that's an important point that we saw commodities coming down all last week, uh, sort of stale the week before as well, right? Not doing much, uh, sort of continuing to come down. Uh, they are having a little bit of a rebound this week, which again begs a question of, okay, are we completely done with the reinflation trade? Completely done because there's a rotation attack, or are we going to just buy everything? Looks like a little bit of everything, if you ask me. Uh, and if we come over here, here's the spy D chart again. I think somebody had asked. Uh, Again, I talked about holding. We had the dividend. We got the dividend Friday, uh, and so this my this being my bank account. This matters to me. Yes. So, again, you get the bid this morning. Again, dividend. You're gonna come down next day. You should be up. Market's up today as well. So this is up two percent. You're doing decent, right? Should be coming back. I talked about coming back up. So, there you are. There you are. Bank account is sound. You are doing better than a savings account. Still, good job. Small caps looking basically like the S&P now. We're going to see and track relationship between small companies, large companies uh, this week continuing. We'll see. Uh, let's take it over to gold. Gold taking a a similar venture on, okay, well, value is going up. I guess gold is value. We're going to see what this looks like. Again, we had, had understood that we were having some pullbacks, had some consolidation, so... We were not trading our J Nugs nuggets or anything like that. Uh, the only way I would take some of these trades now is if we get 
some confirmation that everything is going to be returning to some sort of trend. This could definitely be some sort of, uh, again, continuation pattern, but gold is going to be a little bit different looking. Everything's connected, so we have to give a little bit more time to, to give us some confidence there. All right. All right. So we'll see. We will see. Oh, we could talk about the new charts a little bit. Is uh we're kind of doing the same thing here. It doesn't look like much else is happening. Got a little bit of a lull here. So I did change up the way we're going to look at charts uh, when I post charts, not specifically when we're trading, because again, we don't want to use lagging indicators as basically decision-making uh, tools. They are tools for analysis and how other people view charts. Uh, and so again, for everything I posted, I yeah, will do it like this. Let's use something. Okay, something like this, because again, I already had EBR. We had looked at EBR from before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the 50-day moving average here. That's this line down here. Actually, this is not the greatest chart. Why don't we use home builders? There you go. And I'm going to turn back on volume. Actually, is it down here already? Let me take a look. Not down here. Okay, turn volume back on. Uh, and then for those of you wondering how I did this, what you could do is when you turn the volume on, it's still on your chart, right? But then it overlaps your candles. Doesn't look very good. What you can do is right click on it and move to new pane below. And that'll give you the oscillator. You can bring that bad boy down. This is the only problem is that as I turn it off, there should be a way just to hide it. Uh, I thought I did that, but apparently not. And, and so this is how we're gonna kind of look at charts when I'm when I'm posting them and when we're analyzing them. It gives a little bit of a different perspective into what I believe is something that we need to think about in a little bit of a different way right now. I look at charts through the idea of trends which I also consider trends being levels, levels also being support and resistance. Trend lines also act as support and resistance. So we have trends that uh, give us channels. And then we have trend lines that give us patterns, which are people's behaviors within consolidations. And then the move coming out of them, which would either be a breakout or breakdown. And it forms something that is similar to things we've seen before. People making the same decisions as they've had on other charts, which is how, again, we can use the idea of a pattern on anything because it's a time at which we have the same decisions being made as any other time, no matter what the name is, right? But this is very uh, direct on one's opinion and what they see and finding it on your own, right? And it doesn't show up in some sort of indicator, right? Breakouts are not really seen on indicators uh, until days and weeks after, which if we use a, the moving average example, right? People will say when the moving average is broken from underneath to the upside, then it's a breakout. And then there's gonna be buying. You can see out here, for instance, if we look at, again, I'm using the 50 day. Uh, if you use the 20, you're just 20, 25, whatever you're looking at, you're a little, you're a little, you're a little uh, volatile there. so. It's a little bit much. You can put it on. Uh, but the 50 is a good average. 50 bars, right? And people talk about when this line is broken, then you have a breakout. And when it's beaten to the downside, then they're selling, right? Uh, it's a very utilized sort of indicator. Everyone uses moving averages, even at the institution level, for analysis, right? Uh, and so we can basically use this as 
a view into what other people are thinking. As price starts to approach a moving average, we can think that people are starting to understand that there's a breakout, right? They may not see what we're looking at, which is fine. We have talked about in the past that people have been getting a lot better at breakouts uh, and understanding them when they happen. They may not see what we see here, but they're looking at this moving average being approached, how it broke down, right? They're looking at volume. When we talk about volume, basically what people are looking for is an average volume. And then when volume spikes, why does volume spike? Volume usually spikes when there's a breakdown and a breakout. That's how they think about these things. And so then they, what do they do? They put their average and their volume together. Their volume gives them basically an on the margin sort of look, which is what we look for. But with again, with price itself and not with tools. We're not we're using price itself to make decisions. Other people that use technical analysis use the tools that they have to make decisions. And so what they do is they they find a bunch of tools and put them together to find, you know, convergence between all those indicators and it gives them a signal, right? We use price as a signal, it's a little bit faster, but you have to be able to interpret price correctly. Other technicals give you basically the answer you want just a little bit lagged and so what they look for again is a spike in volume whether it's a breakdown so for instance over here may 12th you had this breakdown candle we had a spike in volume so we can we can now understand that these things are connected there was an outflow over here we have an average we can see that price was moving through the moving average there wasn't spikes of volume though so you can tell that on a ta perspective from someone else whoever they are they would be looking at as price crosses the moving average is there a spike in volume there wasn't so what does that mean well there's not really a true breakout it's still sort of consolidating right it's just at the average volume which if you're crossing a moving average at average volume then it probably doesn't really mean anything what about over here well volume starts to pick up right and price is sitting actually at a support people would look at that and they would say okay we have some sort of bottom in here some sort of support and volume continue to pick up as these candles also grow. The moving average hasn't changed because again, it's an average of all these bars, but what we can see is price is approaching it, right? And so from a TA perspective, from those others, right, that are looking at it through this, they're now starting to, well, really they're not looking at it yet, but what we can understand is that they will look at this when it crosses this, right? Maybe they have a signal set up they have some alert set up that when price crosses the moving average, we'll look at it. So what we're doing is we're actually, since we've already looked at the chart, we can see that this is starting to get to an area where they'd actually look at it. So maybe in a few days time, we'll cross the moving average and then what's gonna happen? You'll probably get some more momentum, right? And so again, what we're trying to do is find out what other people are gonna think before they've thought it. That's what we already do. We already do that using price and using patterns, right? We already do that, but what we're gonna now do is look at what they're looking at. And I say this because at the end of the day, using price itself and using levels and technicals has been the basically most profitable way to trade the market since, since a while, right? For quite some time. Yes, fundamental ideas, they, they matter. Uh, in a lot of different ways but when we talk about wanting to make money right now and how do think how are things happening right this moment and no matter the reason why you want to buy something right let's say you're an institutional trader and you have a client that wants you to buy a billion dollars worth of stock you have to buy the stock but at what point are you going to buy it you are going to buy it if it's not just putting a long order on if you have a specific you're you're putting it on you're going to trade you're going to look for the best entry possible, right? As long as you don't have to put it on immediately, you're going to look for the best entry possible. And so how are you going to do that? How do you find the best entry in the next week, the next two weeks? You've got to use some sort of technical approach, right? And so using what they're going to look at, I think is a, a different way to approach things. Uh, when we look at things through analysis, again, we don't use these for trading. Uh, so you can't go on a five minute and all of a sudden 
uh, start to use this moving average and then be like, well, see, it crossed it. So that's why we bought it. See, it crossed it. That's why we're selling it. Oh, we just kidding. That's why we're buying it. It crossed it. That's why we're selling it. Oh, again, this price doesn't all of a sudden stop because it's crossing an average. These things don't work like this, right? And so, um, again, it's really important that we understand how we're using it and why we're using it and not using it all of a sudden thinking that we have shortcuts because it's very easy to go look at this and and find times when it crosses it and puts points on, but that's exactly why it's it's doing what it's doing, right? It, it's it's giving you information you can already see, right? So this 50 moving a uh 50 day moving average is now a 55 minute candle average. So it's gonna average from this candle 50 candles back. Is it really helping you here? Can you not see what the average is through here, right? And is it really, is it really reacting to this line here? Or is this line just spitting back a lagging average? It just sits a lagging average. No one's making a decision right here because of this line, right? If, again, we're gonna turn this off because we don't need this, can I actually, I have to delete it, I'm pretty sure. Hide. See, that doesn't get rid of this oscillator. That's okay. If we think about things with support, how is support any different? Support's different because it takes the actual level from the actual prices. So these are this is an actual support because we have, again, price converging around this point, not because we put an indicator on and price converges it, right? This isn't, that's, that's a different story. That's using an average over bars. These are the actual candles themselves that converge to the price point, which we understand as support and resistance, right? It's a different, it's a completely different idea, right? And price does stop for these, right? And they do react to these because people react to prices. They don't react to, again, a, a moving average. You could, again, make arguments at times that it does if everyone's making that decision. But that's not, again, how when you're in your broker and you're trying to put your order in, you're not looking at your moving average to put your order in. You're looking at price. Like, okay, I'll buy at 90, but I won't buy at 89, right? That's a different decision than going, well, I'm not going to buy until that moving average is passed. <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that in that moment when you're making the trade. Right, you're you're actually fully going. Okay, this is the price that I'll buy it at. Again, that's what forms our converging of supply. So keep that in mind. But that's why we're using it. So different different view. We're gonna try it out for a little bit and see if, uh, uh, especially when maybe in a few days time and in a week's time, maybe from, yeah, you know, by the end of the week we'll look at these charts and see if those moving averages are being crossed or. Uh, if the volume has moved in such a way that we can then see that the volume picked up because people saw that the moving average was being crossed, right? Even though the breakout already might have happened, now all of a sudden we see a volume spike because people see the moving average being crossed, right? These things, we're going to see how much is actually being tied between those. Uh, so yeah, uh, and keeping that in mind, looks like the spy is about to to cross our imaginary lines as some people would call them, right? These are just made up lines that we've made. They're not as good as your moving average, right? Look at the moving average was already crossed, right? So, oof, we were behind. <laughs> we're getting very close. 420 is on the books, we're at 419 and a half. What do you think is gonna happen here? Are we gonna about to get destroyed right here? Are we not gonna make it? I think we're gonna make it. I think we're gonna make it. We're up over a percent across everything right now. Looks very good. About 1040. Again, this this line is over here. It just lines up at 930 because the daily is 420. Ford up also 
We'd like to see that because we took that trade instead of Tesla over the weekend and it would have felt silly to post the Tesla chart uh, and buy Ford and then have Ford be down and Tesla up and then we didn't buy Tesla. So <laughs> good job on that one. That one wasn't, I mean, that's not too difficult of a decision, but you know, you never know. Sometimes opportunity cost could be a little, little finicky. You buy the wrong one. Nasdaq's coming back. Like everyone, everyone's looking pretty good. Dow is up a percent and a half to erase that 3%. <laughs> uh, that 3% that loss on the week. Lost about 3% last week. This chart is also getting a little... We have to think about what exactly this movement is. Not sure. Again, we had some... I mean, we were already starting to do other things and understand that it, it's so funny how every single one of these tickers is affected in the same way, even though most of these tickers should be doing very well. Very strange how the Dow works. Again, just as strange as how we took the bid, right? You can kind of see how, how difficult it is to uh, understand why all those tickers move with its average. This is a good example of an average that the tickers move uh, just like the rest of the tickers, right? Not a moving average, but they all follow the, ind the index. All right, give it to us. We want to see it. EOY also up 5%. That's back on. Very nice. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It'd be interesting. We're, I mean, we're already up. We're already up a lot. So if we break, if if we are gonna break through this, again, we've we've reached the point, which is what we look for, right? That's the whole point is you converge to that, or excuse me, you gravitate to that converging supply. So we've done that. Now it's whether or not can we pass through that. We know price likes to pass through this. Price wants to right now. Do we have enough? We've already bought a lot. We really need value to keep going bid, which is a kind of a, a very backwards thinking from what we saw last week. We saw a lot of rotation, but people have cash. That's the reality. It's gonna take a, it's gonna take a lot though. It should be interesting. We break through that, oh goodness. What a way to start the week. And a w what a way to have our positions from over the weekend pay us. I think that's really the best part is we've, we've become the risk takers. We are the risk in the market. We are the boogeymen behind the closet. Door's been opened. Come on, come on. I want to get paid more. We did well with the we we did well with the market down last week. I think again, and some of us might have been down, but again, those of us that really pressed and were not afraid to to really take what was given to us. Uh, again, market can be down, and we really pressed positions, and we did pretty well. Again, uh, I don't want to say it. some people you might have been down because you were in long positions. There's nothing wrong with that. You're playing a long game. We're playing it. We're playing the short aggressive strokes right now. Uh, and so those of us that really took risk over the weekend are getting paid for it again. And uh, from what we can see here, we're going to cross this to converging supply. Price, price gravitates to converging supply. We said, you know what? You know, what we said on Friday, we said X marks the spot, baby. X marks the spot. And we're going to pass. We're going to get to that and pass through it and put some points on all time high. Going to get paid. Going to get paid. And what's funny is we're really getting a lot of help from value, <laughs> even though that's exactly what 
we got a lot of help from value last week when it was taking profit and juicing up our mega cap positions. Now we're getting help because it's actually pushing the entire market up, which is the best part about the entire situation. I want to reiterate, we took banks and energy on Friday. As they said in the articles this weekend, gut check. A gut check for value. Yeah, I mean, they held and we bought. We see some individual positions that are moving now. Banks are looking good on the individual side. BRKB is an important one I wanted to bring up as well. This here is a big opportunity. Again, we have a lot of value charts that look like this. I don't think we know yet. I don't think we know yet how to approach some of these. It's just like what the Dow looks like right now. Don't know how we approach some of these. We need to give it a minute. But these would be great opportunities, would they not? If, if we can get everything coming together, get some sort of continuation going, we can't take them now. They're helping us in our other positions. That's an important thing is that it's not that we're missing any positions that are coming from the pullback like this. We're not missing it. It's paying us in our other positions by pushing the average, right? Everything that looks like this right now, like again, has this Dow look. We knew the Dow was going to break back into the channel here, right? We talked about on Friday. It's now up percent and a half. We can't specifically take a position like this right now, but it is paying us anyway. So... Again, we're going to try, again, we took banks and energy. That should be enough, right? We took banks and energy. But for these other individual tickers that, like the BRKBs, I don't think we're completely there yet because we just rotated into growth. What are we doing, right? We, we need to have an understanding, and uh, we're going to do that before we do that, right? We're confident in our other positions. I'm not confident to go to buy some of those, right? Uh, again, Ford position we took over the weekend instead of Tesla, uh, even though it's backwards because then I posted a Tesla chart doing very well, 2%. Remember the Tesla? I think Mopsky just jumped in here. We're waiting for Tesla to break out. We're not buying it on pullbacks. Same thing still from last week where I talked about we got stopped out of this position. We're not buying it on pullbacks. We're buying it on breakout only. We're starting to head back. We were down 2%, starting to head back up there. If it crosses the 624 and a half, the 625 area, that's when we're taking it. That's where we're usually taking it. Doesn't change anything, but. Good. I do like this chart a lot still. Healthcare, we're doing very well. CYH is also there. Uh, when we look at, when you look at the, the larger side of things, we're starting to come back up. We've talked about taking the Anthem United Health trades. So again, these are coming up. But again, this entire side of things, entire side of things here it's questions unless the sector is giving us a reason so again healthcare is what we talked about on friday okay. retail stores are all doing well uh ge's coming up here uh, as we see we've talked about this on friday uh some of the blue chips they should do better than the average Right, BA here on support. Talked about that on Friday. There was a lot of reasons for everything to hold in terms of support across the market. Really, the S and P being on support was a big factor, and also because, like I said, all these articles and shit that I read, that oh no, the the inflation trade, the reinflation trade really got fucked up because. Of what the Fed said, it's true in that we rotated to growth because we want to be more risky buying, but they're not going to go away. The important thing to remember is just because we're going to increase interest rates now in 2023 <laughs> and possibly take down asset purchases by the end of the year, by a little bit, the reason why that talk is happening is because what's happening is the economy is very hot and the Fed was going to let the economy stay hot for a very long time. Now what are they doing? They're not going to let it be as hot. Does that mean it's not going to be booming? 
the economy is not going to boom. No, that's not what it means. We're not even talking until 2023. So again, talking about some some very silly kind of ideas that again get overreacted to, and that's that's not what we should be doing. The the economy is not all of a sudden going to stop because we're going to rise interest rates by one basis point in two years. That's not how this works. And it's not how the market works either. And so again, any reaction that we saw in the market was to be more risk on. It's so, again, I, maybe it's game theory by fucking people. I have no idea. But I definitely read a lot of interesting things that were a little out of touch. I think if you go to any institution or hedge right now, they're not going, you know what? Well, the economy is going to really slow down now. <laughs> And it's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. We're buyers all the time. So we're right there. We're going to do the dance, right? We're going to do the dance on resistance. Taking a look at things like travel. These are some areas that we pulled back down a little bit more. Again, this open was riddled with the usual. So just to reiterate it again, we've been doing Monday, big Monday trades, right? Everyone puts their big weekly positions on. What happened last week? Well, we started to rotate into growth. So we were taking profit and rotating from value. This morning, we had the usual Monday orders come in on value where everyone was just buying their big weekly orders for value. And then everyone on the growth side was like, what the hell is going on? And so we had things that were volat in the volatile sense. Again, tech is volatile, uh, travel is volatile, short-term volatile, right? We saw these positions be the ones that reacted like, well, what are we doing here? We've come bid. Travel actually continued to come down a little bit. This is interesting though, because we're interacting with this, this level here on some of these charts. We, again, have these positions going bid on them. Uh, we certainly like them on the support. It's This is a great spot, but it is interesting to see some of this movement and how we have so much demand for some other things that this is not so much bounced yet. But very happy with our positions in here. And I, I think it's really easy to look at. I'm guessing everyone can agree. Pretty easy to look at this as a great spot to be in. So um, uh, even though we haven't moved like the rest of the market, I'm still happy with the position uh in the same idea so i mean it has the same idea so happy with that we are seeing a lot of nice moves on retail stores so enough eo they all look good we're seeing retail across the board again anything tied to consumers do a little bit better on the value side than than the average In terms of bank and energy, how much do we get today? It's hard to tell. That looks like a nice little stop. You continue, but... Uh, again, the big thing here with energy, which is... Again, it's really not that hard. Price of crude. Price of all oil keeps going up. It keeps going up. Every single day, the barrel is more expensive. Energy market is tied to that. Almost always been tied to it. This little swing down has to, again, be adjusted and get back to that point. That's how these things trade. That's just how it works. Not perfect, but what we can do is find points at which we can be buying on a low and swing it to the high because, again, that's how these things work. That's how we do it with X, for instance. So, it's a nice trade. Nice trade. Banks are going to be a little different. Can we didn't trade? We're not. We're not trading XLF, XLE. You can. We're trading individual banks. So things like GS, right? EAC. These are the kind of things that we are buying. JPM is. It's just. It's just a little bit too hanky for me to usually use. So that's why I don't usually talk about it. 
It is the biggest. It is the biggest song. Yo, why? Uh, as I talked about, looking very good. So again, we had a very nice move when we started from the weekly chart. This pullback here looks just like the rest of value. It's bouncing off here. Looks like a nice continuation to start. So that is something to go take again. Let's watch this as we were just talking. We just started crossing through 420. Just started crossing through. Those of you that bought SPY 420s off the back of my, just go buy it. Good job. You're now, you now have intrinsic value. Oh, now you don't. Sorry. I lied. It's going to be a very interesting move in here. I have no idea what's going to happen. You either, you either take a moment to break through the supply or everyone just agrees to buy through it right now and it's going to be instant. It's not going to be in between. It's going to be either long or short. Because I don't think you can just... You're not going to just sit here is the point. You're not going to just sit here. Looks like a nice climb through. I don't think we really know how much supplies here, so. And also, we also have this, we're just kind of melting feel. I don't know if anyone else notices that. It doesn't feel like there's actually like action. It just feels like we're melting. The orders are just average. <laughs> we're literally just cutting a line through this. It looks like we're cutting butter here, right here. Which is a little strange. If I turn this off, it doesn't really feel like we're interacting, so I keep that in mind. Okay. But nice bit, nice bid Monday. Job. All time highs on the Nasdaq and back up on the Spy S and P. I think it is still important to note that. We are in, again, we're not at the record high today on S&P, but we do not have, we only have the supply from when we were just there, right, from last week, week before. There's not really any supply in there. We didn't create a new level. We were swinging through and swing, swung back down. So we didn't actually create a level, so there's still not really supply up here. All we have is this point here, and then possibly a trend line coming off the top. So... We don't really have much up here. So when we move through this, we have no real resistance. Important to keep that in mind. That's sort of why I'm talking about it this way. But we'll see. We shall see. We're moving pretty slow now. Losing some volume, or at least we're getting a little tight in here. Where's the buying going to come through? Probably on mega caps. Probably on mega caps. Maybe Tesla will help out. Most likely Amazon. Microsoft and Google are 
both about to get to a percent and a half. Facebook's almost at a percent. Apple is heading to a percent. Amazon looks like it's heading back to break even. That should push us through here. I don't know where the trend line keeps going. Well, it's getting interesting. Oh, so other things. We have Powell testifying tomorrow. Just to Congress. So he gets to answer a bunch of dumb questions by people that don't understand things in the economy. That's always fun. But maybe we'll hear some nice little Nice little tidbits. Market usually doesn't care about congressional hearings. They're too drawn out. <laughs> it's not like the con it's not like FOMC uh conference where we get everything in like the first ten minutes. Makes digesting a little easier. Quicker. Get a nice long drawn out, what is it like? at noon or something, and then, yeah, carries on for hours. Well, we're certainly getting pretty tight on there. Give us the, give us a big fatty right there, big green. This here. Market churns on dot shock. <laughs> oh my god, I love Bloomberg. So remember last week, the market was, you know, ravaged by the Dot plot shock, value absolutely decimated, a gut check for the value players. And now, now what they're saying is U.S. stocks rebound with value rally back in play. The value rally's back, boys. Now we can buy value. On Friday, it was the value play is completely destroyed because of the, the very shocking surprise by the Fed and the dots. But now the value rally is back. So now we can still buy everything. Good job. So oh, funny. Whatever they have for that automated thing, they have to turn off because it, it's so silly. Every five minutes, it changes its mind. Rallying. No, we're, we're losing. Overall, everything doing very well. When we start to head to the red side, most, almost everything is take profit from a big Friday. So we have things like, let me give an example, like DocuSign, right? We had a very big Friday. Oh, can't even see it. So 5.5% Friday, you took profit. We're down 1%. Things like that make a lot of sense. In terms of meme stocks, retail is kind of mm, all over the place this morning, kind of break even. But everything is very, I mean, there's only a few things that are on the take profit side that we're really looking at. Everything else is some break even that's as it had come out of the low, it's turning to the high now or to the green side. Definitely, definitely everything. It's an across the board buying. It's not specific to one side. I think that's important to see.
need to meme stock ETF. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I do. Th I mean, I, I do think uh, retail traders are more than just meme stocks, right? I think they've been trading a lot of tech. Uh, but meme stocks themselves, they, they just mimic the S&P. Every time I look at AMC, it looks like the S&P intraday. I mean, I think it's just... Uh, the first time in January was like a just a surprise. We didn't, we weren't ready for that. And so everyone got involved. But now this time, everyone is involved. Even institutions are trading meme stocks. But we're all... We're all a part of it, and we're not surprised this time, and so we're kind of handling it better. And uh, they definitely matter because they're up in so much percent. Like <laughs> something has to happen. You can't just be up. I mean, you can't be up a thousand percent year to date. I mean, you can, but not in terms of you put it on in in a week, in a month. Like things will change, but yeah, they matter. They're definitely getting enough attention. And I think it does help with understanding where the volatility is from retail traders, which, again, is something that is important. It's made, they make up 25% of the volume in the market. So, again, it's really important that we do respect the way in which they move. And if most of their movement is through meme stocks, then we can understand what they're doing every single day because they're either up or down. And so as long as it's, like, below like an absolute of 10%. So if AMC is not up 10% or down 10%, then they're kind of having an equilibrium day, right? They're kind of trading flat. Maybe there's both sides have an argument, right? If it's up or down over 10%, then I think we have an understanding. Okay, well, there they go. We're bid, we're not. Also in terms of, I do think what's playing out here is as I talked about, you, you have the meme stocks and they're fun for the moment. The momentum is there. And then all of a sudden you have the new sort of new blood that has new money and they're going to look for something to buy. And it's really easy just to, to paint the picture and say they're going to go to mega caps because that's what they're going to do. They're going to go buy. They're going to go buy mega caps because now they have the money to buy something a little bit bigger. And it's a name without realizing that everyone just trades those already, right? And so we're just already in position all the time. And then we benefit from, from them going from a meme stock, which again, is easy to see them leave a meme stock. The movement is, is so, you know, scripted. I think the, didn't we get a meme stock ETF? I don't remember what the name of that was. We haven't checked it. The YOLO? Or something not YOLO, it's um YOLO is the other thing. Uh what is the name of that thing? FOMO, right? FOMO. I think we looked at it when it first came out, but it obviously had some problems. Oh, it's got even no volume right now. Oh, it has zero volume. Okay, so everyone said fuck that. Average volume is eighteen point two thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's not helpful at all. Uh funny yeah so a bunch of if we think about the SPAC boom and then everyone was like well what if we just make an ETF of all this dumb shit <laughs> it obviously doesn't really work because again why would I go buy that up I could just go buy the thing I'm already buying anyway what do I gotta you can't transfer volume you can't make people go buy something else it doesn't really make sense yellow is the uh, is the other hot stock. Okay, now it's like great. Uh, you know, again, I think this is a question over here. I think we'll we'll take the week to figure out what exactly this is gonna look like. If we get another continuation candle tomorrow on on the value, like on the the Dow sort of value side, um, then things will be very interesting because this is possibly a daily whip and you're basically doing a v-neck and you got to be careful when there's a bunch of guys in v-necks i would not trust a group of v-necks especially if they're all white v-necks and i don't mean like white i mean like the white shirt is v-neck 
probably white people too. That that's even scarier. They're probably psychopaths. If it was a colorful group, then I'd feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's a V neck right there on the value. Gotta be careful. Can lead to disastrous things. We could be asking this week is the Dow drunk? Tequila Dow. Drop's still doing very well for us. Uh, I think our angle has been very good. So again, we continue. Big names, big paydays. Very easy to forget how many points we have on some of these charts. <laughs> Pretty easy to forget. Uh, yeah. Funny when you look at it in hindsight. Pretty funny when you look at it in hindsight. Such a quick, it's such a quick in the moment thing when we take a position. We haven't really, nothing's really happened yet. And then when you look back, you go, huh, yeah, that's a good spot to buy, isn't it? <laughs> That's a nice spot to buy. It's like what I was doing with the Amazon chart because it's always like, that looks like a nice spot to buy down there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Just 10% in a week and a half. That was pretty good. Really not bad. That would be a nice spot to buy. Just throw a little back test in there and find out what buys right there. See, that's the, the thing that people don't do. They try to back test bad ideas. What they should be doing is back testing. They should look for places that would be good if here's the problem again, is that's well also why we're adding in the moving average and volume thing, right? To to do analysis. I talk about when you look at a chart, we're looking at it through the lens of trading. Every candle you look at, you look at through is this an entry or an exit, right? If people did that. That when they also went back and looked at charts, for instance, if they're back testing a strategy, you don't back test the bad idea to see if it works. What you do is you find out, or excuse me, you don't just like keep back testing and just have it do the entirety of everything. What you do is you look for the points at which it would be good to take the trade, even in hindsight. So this is obviously a really nice spot to take a trade, right? Right before a rally. So when you back tested a strategy or whether you're just thinking about it, whatever it is, the strategy needs to be entering the chart right here. And if it doesn't, then throw it out. And you do that on a bunch of different charts, right? That are all offering the same sort of the same spot. It's at the same moment in time, right? If the strategy does not create an entry here before this move, then it's not, it's not the good strategy. Maybe when they do a strategy, it says, no, we, we were able to capture this. If it's not entering at when the entry was, then where was it entering? Was it entered back here? Well, that's not where, or, excuse me, maybe it was entered back here. Maybe it was entered back here, right? And so then the strategy goes, no, no, we gained on it, right? But it's not really taking into consideration the moments of time when you should be entering and exit trades. And so that's like the thing is that instead of back testing over like 10 years, just go find the spots at which you should be entering and exiting, right? Maybe you should be exiting here, right? And then plop it in and find out which, which strategies do do those things. How many things actually entered there, right? And, or held through here, right? Those are the kind of things that people don't really look at things like this. That's why we'll always have an edge, just a little bit faster, but it's, it's everything to buy before everyone else. That's that's just the reality. Could be one percent on the underlying, but it's could be a hundred percent on the option because no one has speculated on the move yet. Everyone's still betting it's going to go to the downside. Right? Roku doing great for us through three. It's through three seventy nine here. Turn this bad boy green again. This is our weekly chart. Uh, I want to keep reiterating that the first couple weeks. After every weekly chart posted so far, have really done well. So I'm pretty happy with some of the weekly charts I've taken out. Obviously, the ELY had pulled back a little bit. We talked a little bit about some of those, uh, some of the moves like that. But most weekly charts have really done well. Um, so in terms of long term things, we're still very on on the long term uh, on ideas. Of course, 
weekly charts can be just you can swing trade right it's, that's that's not really uh the point right it's not really the point we're just looking for where things are heading if we think the market's going up because of macroeconomic reasons we can't just only trade it macroly we can trade it on a micro level still right that's it's just we need to be trading things that are bullish we need to know that it's going to keep going up in the future to be able to take swing trades on it and buy every bu every pullback right if if mega caps are not bullish to the upside we can't buy every pullback right and so we understand basically the question is is this chart bullish enough to buy on every pullback that's really the question that's why we do what we do but nice move here So, so far, we have a rejection at the level. Resistance technically should reject, but again, we're looking for the upside here. So, going to be watching closely what this move looks like. Maybe the third candle here. Maybe the third 15-minute candle here is going to be the one. That's usually the fastest pace that you would get. You see it a lot. It's, I mean, we're, <laughs> here's the thing is the, the, the further we push into lunch, the less likely, unless we get just a melt, entirely possible, we just get a melt up and then no one cares, but I would like to see decisions being made at this level, but okay, if we don't. Because it is getting into lunch. Oh, otherwise, we don't have any economic events or anything this week, so just the usual. Just tomorrow. Just tomorrow with Powell giving us some testimony. I think a lot of it's going to be... I think we did have ECB stuff today. Or I know we did, but... We also have... I think a big watch on China with their regulation... So they continue to talk about this weekend regulation on crypto. Again, Bitcoin down quite a bit, 32 right now. I think this week we'll continue to watch China very carefully. I think that we're all kind of on the edge of our seats waiting to see what exactly that market's going to turn into. Trader says buzz, port noise. <laughs> port noise and... All this junk. What is this at volume for now? It's at 125,000 average. Not terrible. Again, you can tell though. Kind of hard. That's why I always talk about you need volume. It's funny that we had so many of these pop up, though. Really intriguing. And we had all the SPACs popping up. What a very strange time. The more, the most IPOs technically ever <laughs> with, or not ever, but since dot-com bubble area. Since the 90s, early 2000s. Wouldn't fears surrounding inflation be overblown since we were comparing prices from last year when we were still in the worst stages of COVID? So that's what the Fed is saying, right? The Fed has been, like, besides kind of what their last meeting just said, but the Fed was saying it's transitory, right? It's, it's just an in this moment thing because again, it did come from COVID. Yes, we came from, we came from a recession. Wouldn't you rather have the fear of an overheated economy because the Fed took us out of a recession during the worst time in COVID 
than if the Fed did nothing, right? We would be fucked if the Fed did nothing. And so again, it's it's always easy to look at it as, I, I don't know, they're causing inflation, but it's again, yeah, it's coming from a low. And so it is, think of, that's, and that's exactly true. Like everyone has a different opinion, but think about what we were talking about months ago. We were betting that inflation is good. We were like, no, this is actually good for the equity market. And it's so far been true. It's paid off and been true, right? Everyone that was scared and started taking profit and did stupid things, rash decisions, because they were like, well, inflation's bad and I'm a boomer. People that live through inflation, right, have a different view than younger people, sure. But was the inflation so bad back then that what? What was it like living through that inflation? Was it really that bad, right? And that was a completely different scenario. This was in a self-induced a heatening of the economy because we entered a recession. That's the fucking truth. And everyone in the equity market should be fucking happy that they were able to double the price of some of their tech stocks in three months after the low, right? And so it is overblown. Uh, inflation is transitory in the sense that it came from COVID, the low. And so the prices being compared, yes, are a little off. What we do do, though, with inflation is we're not comparing the prices from the low or comparing them from from a longer period of time. And so it's a little again, it's a little bit different than that. We make sure not to be like too silly comparing them. Uh, they are up higher than before COVID. Uh, so that is important. But the thing to remember is that going into even early 2020, we were deflationary. We were having a very hard time increasing inflation. Do you know what happened from 2008 to, to this moment? QE. QE had not even stopped yet before 2020. It was still happening. We were tapering. During that entire time and spending all that money, we could not get inflation going. There was a brief moment when we did. There was a brief moment when we did. But we could not sustain 2% inflation. We were deflationary. And so this is, again... Uh, it's it's a argument between two different two different schools of thinking and that's that the fed and what they're doing with qe is is a good thing in at least the sense that it's sustainable and it's worth worth it to basically boom the economy and that the repercussions are not uh what the other school says which is that inflation is a bad thing that we can't control uh in there's like a way to think about it is that if the fed is able to do what they do and take us out of a recession through their tools then can't they take a booming economy and keep it under control can't they can't we sustain a booming economy if we can take something out of a recession doesn't it seem like one's more extreme than the other? Like, oh God, we're all so happy because we're all doing so well. This is so bad. It that's not how it works. And I think again, it's a, the way people think. And it's like when we talk about healthcare and how people they want to pay for their own healthcare and they don't want to even think about their money going to help someone else. Right? People are so individualistic. That's what the other school is really about. Is well. Everyone else doing better is not better for me, right? And I think we forget that the economy and the way everything works, markets work, it's, it's about everyone doing well for you to do well. And so, again, it's, it is kind of silly to think about things, but from just the, from your question, yes. Uh, it, it's really silly because we're talking about something that's years from now, right? Yes, we should think about them and take steps before those things happen, but... Uh, <laughs> That's what the Fed's doing. Yeah, that's what the Fed's doing. And it's so silly that we were like, well, the Fed's, the Fed keeps telling us it's transitory. They're not prepared for how bad inflation is going to be. And then, and then the Fed comes out here last week and says that we're going to, we're going to actually bring interest rates back sooner than later. <laughs> and then everyone's like, ah, you changed your mind. <laughs> and it's like, wait, didn't, isn't that what you guys wanted? It's just, it's all silly. I mean, I think we're going to have a different change. We're going to have a different, uh, we're going to have a different, 
idea of economics soon anyway. I think MMT. Uh, I mean, everyone has a different opinion on it. So modern monetary theory is the idea that we can continue to print money and spend it, and it won't lead to uh, uncontrollable inflation. It's basically the idea that the federal government, so not the Federal Reserve, the federal government doesn't really need to worry about revenues and that they can just go over budget all the time as long as we're printing money from the Fed. And it won't cause a problem because we have a fiat currency, which is basically the currency of the world. And it won't lead to inflation like we've seen, not really in this country, but in the historical sense, because they never had a fiat currency like we do. And so the idea is that we should always take advantage of, of spending and that it's actually a way to prosper and boom. And QE was the start of that, 2008. And we've shown that it worked and we were able to get out of a recession quickly. And the rest of the world followed us. And it, we, are, we, boomed, we boomed the market for 12 years, 13, well, 12 years so far. We've been in a boom for 12 years, bull market for 12 years. And the market still hasn't reacted negatively to that. And so I think now when we do this again with COVID, something else that was surprising, we did so well with it. You're, you're having a little bit of the, mar the Fed itself is thinking about MMT and they're utilizing it. Now it's the, whether the rest of people are going to hop onto the MMT bandwagon progressives will in a political sense they will they will talk about it because again the government doesn't need to worry about revenues underneath this model and so we don't need to be taxing poor people for instance that's sort of that angle and so if you have politicians advocating for mmt for uh equality reasons but then you have economists going for mmt because it's the model that makes the most sense then all of a sudden you have this crossover that actually turns into we're going to keep doing QE forever, which QE infinite is a meme. But is it a meme that it's been going on for 12 years and we just did it again? I mean, you have to really start to wonder. And, and again, I agree with it. I think, I think it's, if we don't do it, then look how bad things would have been. I mean, it's crazy to think if we didn't actually have the ability to do this uh, and just spend a fuck ton of money and take us out of holes all the time. Yeah, we need to be careful at peaks, not to make the peaks turn into crashes, but uh, to think that we can't do that when we pull us ourselves out of dips so well, we can we can take advantage. We can we can be all right at the peaks, right? We want to reach peaks. We want to push everything, make everyone, you know, make the markets go up more so us greedy fucking bastards can make more money right it's helped out so far keep doing it we'll be dead before the things go bad anyway right mckeezus we i snuck in at about 9 35 or something <laughs> yeah i was i wasn't here for uh before open but We are admiring. We are admiring the beautiful prices of the market. We're watching X marks a spot here, converging levels of supply that we bet on from Friday. We're watching to see if the market's going to break through this point and go put all time high on Nasdaq's all time high. We're doing great with mega caps still. Our bets over the weekend that the market would be up have paid off. Banks and energy have done well from the bet down low. So value did not die. What is dead can never die. That's what values value traders know because value is dead, but it can't die. S&P we're watching for. Otherwise, we have individual tickers doing great. A lot of great positions out there uh, that we continue with because, again, we've been very risky. But otherwise, there hasn't been much going on. We, I mean, you haven't had to do anything today so far, really. Apple about to hit the 1%, so that's helping. If we can get some momentum with mega caps, we will push through that 420 on SPY. And 
and the bells will ring and the people will sing and the the bank accounts will increase. We're still being held. It's lunchtime. But we're still holding this level. It's just the question of what side of this level are we on right now? <laughs> Do we push through and then pull back into the support? Again, there's a little bit of an error. It's not going to be perfect. Do we push through and pull back into support and we're now on the upside? Or which side are we on? It's too tight of a spread. This is less than 10 basis points of a spread, these three candles. So it's actually impossible to tell which side we're on. I think upside's obvious. It, upside is just more likely, but heading into lunch, we could definitely swing down and have to wait till uh, close or the rest of the week to start to push through this level. We don't put it on right now. Value has definitely slowed down and just holding the points that they put on earlier. Oh, that's kind of how we wanted the line right there, actually. There you go. Trading view jerking us around here. With our goddamn line. Give me a lot of fun this week, boys. Rotation into growth last week. Buy everything this week. That can only mean one thing, right? Buy more. Four twenty two is half a percent higher. So let's go over here to the Dow. Let's see. If this starts to go bid from here again, we're already up a percent and a half. That should push everything. Stupid Dow. We should be using XLE and XLEF as our modes actually. So we'll look. These two bad boys. Go bid through here. We already saw Megas going, then everything's about to go through. What are small caps doing? Small caps have the same luck. Let's see. Taking a little look around. Snaps on on support here. Where are we on some of the COVID winners? Still doing dog shit. See, this is why we don't buy this. Good job. Zoom looking decent. Retail traders still dicking around, not doing much. Oh, now we fucked up. This again. Where is the line going? Okay, whatever. Fine. How much to see now? Looks like everyone's crawling back into their holes. 
They're taking a break. Oh, and the other thing we're going to watch this week, because there's no economic data, is... Is politics. And I don't mean in, like, that way. I just mean in terms of... When are these plans going through? We signed how many goddamn bills in, like, the first month? And now we're... <laughs> we've slowed down a little bit. When are infrastructure bills coming through? Yada, yada, yada. Maybe paying attention to a little bit of that stuff this week market will be reacting to something because it has nothing else to do this week anyways should be looking for those i don't think anyone really knows i don't think anyone really understands what the hell they're trying to do or at least i find it admirable to try to find uh <laughs> a middle ground <laughs> but I mean, I'm pretty sure Democrats knew that Republicans were not going to sign on with spending money. So why don't you just, with your majority, go fucking do the things anyway? What are you guys waiting for? You're just as much of the problem. You have the numbers. Just go push through the bill. They also agree with spending money on infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> if they were <laughs> that's literally what Trump said he was going to do was spend money on infrastructure they don't mind spending money on infrastructure just push it through so stupid they all agree on the same thing they just they're all sick <laughs> once we get that we'll finally have an understanding I think that's the one thing we're really waiting for is the stupid what is the specifics of this infrastructure thing because that also would help with understanding how much money are we actually going to see, like a direct uh, effect in the economy right now. Maybe we'll hear tomorrow with the, you know, we might actually hear tomorrow with the Powell testifying. Maybe he'll fucking ask a question. <laughs> why don't, why is it that Congress is asking Powell? Why don't Powell ask Congress some fucking questions? Hey guys. When do you think you're going to get this stuff through? Because it would kind of impact our whole thing with inflation. Because if you're going to put another $6 trillion in the economy, I'd really like to know. Thanks. Jay Powell. Uh, yeah, the whole world's kind of wondering when are you guys going to pass that $6 trillion of extra stuff? Because kind of all wondering... You guys having another little a little party over here at Congress? <laughs> another little pancake dinner? We should all just become lobbyists. What do you think? This is a disgusting group of lobbyists, the boogeymen. Also, funny how that, funny how when, uh, well, it's a couple of ways to look at it, but I'm pretty sure lobbying was being looked at in a very bad light, and there was talks of possibly doing something about it. Funny how that's gone away. <laughs> funny how that's gone away all of a sudden. You know what? If they're lobbying me for clean energy, fucking pay me. <laughs> I'm a Democrat. <laughs> That's what Democrats are saying right now. They're like, lobbying is really bad. Because big oil lobbying is bad. And then all of a sudden, all the lobbying is now actually for clean energy and shit like that. They're like, you know what? Fuck it. Pay me. No problem. Lobbying's great. <laughs> really makes you think. Really hard to turn down money. If someone's offering you money, it's really fucking hard. Especially if you agree with it.
There it comes. Come on. Come, come. Right before lunch so I can take a break here. Just show me, show me that my feet are going to be wet. I bet this looks disgusting on the five minute. Let's take a look. There you go. <laughs> Been holding equilibrium for fucking 40 minutes. There it goes. See you, boys. Come on. I see the bids. Go, go, go. All of a sudden, you get no bids to buy. You got to go buy the ask. Push the price. No bid, all ass. That's what they say. It's going to be a melt. It's going to be a melt of a lunch if we're holding this here. Might be take profit close, something like that. So if you get really risky positions, probably before two o'clock, you want to be getting ready. I don't really have anything like that, so. Barn burner. <laughs> it's not even moving. Not even moving. <laughs> it just just pushing through the little bit last of supply here. It's it's funny because we're barely moving, but as soon as we break through it's gonna be so fast. Or it's gonna look so fast. And there's going to be no one trading, though, because it's lunch. I think everyone already pieced out. Except the thing to remember is that it's hot again in New York. And no one really wants to go out for lunch. So you'll have more traders at their desk working more because they hate heat. Power broker lunch. Nah, we'll stay we'll stay inside. I'll order. All right, everyone jump on my Grubhub list. We'll all order together. We'll just trade the day away. Just bought this shirt. Don't want to get it sweaty. Or this is also, if you've noticed, during the summer is also when traders are also getting the most jacked. And as in jacked, I mean like less fat. Because they don't want to go outside, so they'll go to the gym. Go to the gym, get in better shape. Definitely not outside, though. I guess the, the psychopaths that run out in this heat. Couldn't imagine. I'd have skin cancer all over my head. So would half the other traders. Now, in my current circumstance, I also feel the same. Stuck in the apartment. I'm really trapped. There it is, boys. You did a great job. You did a great thing. You bought and you held. Now you're going to let a little thing called 
supply and demand lead you home. Feels pretty good. Let Jesus take the wheel. Exactly. <laughs> We're on our way to Jesus, boys. <laughs> I all of a sudden, you know what? All of a sudden, I believe in heaven. And we're heading there. That's where we're headed. When that, so next time someone asks, there is no, you know, it never ends. The sky's the limit. Or the sky's not the limit. Heaven is. <laughs> Wait until the... Wait until the S&P is at, what are we going to be at? If I was at 420, it's going to be at 1,000. The old 10,000 S&P. But we're basically watching paint dry now. Not much to see. All indices are up across the board. Dirty Dow with a little bit of a bounce back. We saw that it's a bit of a V. Watch out for the V-necks. Small caps, 2%, bouncing back as well. Banks, energy doing well. Uh, from last week's low, from rotation into growth. So banks, energy doing decent enough here. We should not be watching on the 5-minute. That's my bad. But all bouncing off. What energy looks like. And again, we had a rotation from value into growth last week. S&P took a little bit of a hit because of that. But the NASDAQ continued to go bid. Specifically, not this average, but through mega caps, right? Mega caps doing very well. Amazon, big days. Google, Microsoft, big days. Facebook had to have been a little bit flatter. Uh, again, they were the sharpest of the bunch leading before. Tesla, we're watching, waiting for it to come above this level. That's when we're taking the trade. We buy everything on pullbacks except for Tesla. Tesla is a breakout only trade, just like with our other sort of uh, growth stocks that we talk about being sort of momentum based trades. We want to be careful about those. So, again, we're willing to miss a percent or two to be right. We don't want to be wrong. You're going to be wrong more times than you're right. So, we'll wait until it's right and then we'll take it. Otherwise, a very green start to the week. Uh, interesting morning due to just, again, the value trade was back on, so everyone was waiting a minute on growth. But here we are. We said last week, we're buying everything. We're continuing to buy everything, and then we put risk on over the weekend because we said, you know what? We have two converging levels of supply, and you know what price likes to do? It likes to gravitate to that and burst through it. That's what we got. And we see this so damn much that it ought to have a name. That's the truth. It should have a name because of how often we buy things because of that. Honestly. I mean, it's it's just because of the way the levels work, so we already understand it. But maybe we should give it a name, you know? Instead of just saying crossing levels of supply, converging levels of supply. There's a lot of supply there. A lot of liquidity. There's going to be a lot of gravitation there. A lot of orders there. We understand those things, but why don't we call it something, right? Maybe think about that. I'll think about it. Because it honestly is such an important... It, it's such an important sort of thing that we utilize that we're really ahead of the curve. Again, sort of like I talked about with moving averages. Moving average is not going to give you this point with two levels of supply. It's not going to give you that. There is nothing you can put on an indicator that's going to give you this level of support that we bought on and the idea of this resistance being actually a point of uh, a point of uh, gravitational or really like a pull in price because of the way in which it acts as i don't know it needs a name i'm not sure what we call it so i have to think about it because it's too often now that at least in the way i think about it differently but at least in the way i describe it I feel like every time I describe it, it happens. I obviously think about it in just the sense that it's a level that is to be broken, but yeah. Otherwise, guys, a lot of green. Anyone that continued to buy on the pullback, yet again, you were paid. And those of you that didn't, it's okay, but another lesson to learn. Another lesson to learn, because you can have a rough week last week, but 
it's what you turn the next week into, right? I mean, at the end of the day, where some people, if some people are making money, then there's a way to do it, right? So I think it's pretty clear. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what we did last week and also what we have here today. I think we're really, again, we're on top of it, and that's what matters. We're going to keep fucking grinding and being uh, problem solvers, and because I love fucking money, and Jesus Christ, we've made some money, so... Uh, we're gonna continue. It doesn't stop. There's no point. It's like at what point can you stop? It's like pff, There's no number. We'll just keep doing it. Fuck the money. It's about just being right all the time and and figuring out learning things Yep, I can't take the money with me when I'm dead So I might as well keep spending it right if I can't spend it on shit I'll spend it on fucking stocks and options, right? What else am I gonna buy it with so? We keep trading now we can take a break, though, because we don't have to do anything, because, yeah, it's lunch, so let's take a break. I'll see you guys this afternoon. Uh, it's, this looks like it's going to be a fun afternoon. Uh, again, watch around that 2 o'clock range, probably for some take profits to start coming to close. Uh, it doesn't have to, but just always keep in mind that that's a likely possibility, probably the highest probability. Uh, so I'll see you guys then. Enjoy.